right, I'm back. Um, let's start off with Monica. Hi again, Matthias. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going to... As long as it's not going bad. Hmm. I'm happy you are applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share... Want to share... Fuck. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and I, you and Sayori are really good friends, right? Oh shit, I forgot. You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, oh, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori... We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But there may be... But maybe there is also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you... It sounds like the two of you really care about each other as well, do even if you do, even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get whenever when I read your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not really reading it? In? You sure you're not really reading? You sure you're not reading it in? Fuck. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, but in any case, Sayori's writing has a gentle feel to it. I could tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who, who knew that? Who knew that someone would have? Who knew that someone would so? Fuck. Who knew someone? Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cassophony, cassophony of meaningless noise. The noise it won't stop. Violet and granting warp, violent granting warp forms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a, um, like playing a chop bar on the turnable. Turn table, my bad. Like playing a vinyl. On a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? What? Hmm. It's even more abstract than the last one, huh? It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ah uh -huh. I guess I just. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if y'all like it. Well, I never said that. It's just kind of, it's just the kind of thing that I never, that I've never really expected before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space yourself, yourself, your words, can totally change the mood for the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote my, the lines, really short, makes me... The way I wrote the lines really makes fuck. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. The noise, my bad. I see. It's still hard for me to tell. 
what's it about, though? Uh huh. Sometimes asking a poem, asking sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract, abstract, as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with a reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Something unexpected. Wait, is this a tip? Of, wait, is this a tip even about writing? I don't know. Whatever I'm, whatever am I talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Wait, she said. Who should I read my? Hold up, wait a minute. Speaking of which, I might say. Let's read the Yuri. Let's see what you. Let's see what you have written for today. Hmm. This is pretty good, Matthias. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing style yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes. So I respect you trying. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work on your. Don't think you need to work. Don't feel like you need to. Don't feel like you need to. Damn it, I cannot fucking read. Don't feel like you need to walk your brain like you're telling me you're turning a bunch of keys. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things that you can see or hear. And write down the things you can see. And write down the things you see or hear. That's one way to. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see, to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly a, that's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that. If you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this a poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That I was, I believe, the first time I noticed a, my strange tendencies as a, an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of a brick. I gave a pe- I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious are well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The exciting beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon. A what? The raccoon. I I don't know. I can't read cursive. I'm sorry. The the moon in, the moon inclement. In, the room the moon incriminates its face and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The same light that glister glisters into the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft the raccoon. I, I slice the bread fresh and soft. I slice the bread, slice it fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You 
could say that we've gotten quite a few to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry and more and more frequently. So my bread is always hard. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me it, its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic. Powder and finishing. I slice the bread. I feed myself, and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express my to express vivid imaginary and convincing and conveying emotion through them. Yeah, if it, if I take it, yeah, if I take it at face value, value, then I can't figure out what's supposed what's it supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way I, it feels for me to indulge in my more you unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things that you that I'm usually forced to keep myself keep to myself. So some so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing, and some people will make fun of me. Do you have anything like that in Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best way, the best we can do is respect each other in our other in our in fact, fuck. The best, the best we can do is respect each other in our individualities, even if it's difficult sometimes. embrace my own weirdness, then I probably would hate myself. I, I might be ranting you a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. Okay, then. All that's left now is Natsuki. Oh, Lord. Hmm. Well, I can admit, it's better than the last one. Everyone's a critic. Okay. It's nice that you're putting in some effort. That's good. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Well, I guess you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never stuck me. But you never struck me. You never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Bitch, you're just fucking jealous. Just admit it. It's like she's dragging along a dead weight. Uh, wow, okay. Okay. Ooh. That was a little unnecessary, right? Like, like, calm the fuck down. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she probably would fly away. <laughs> she probably would just, she would probably just fly away. Like, let it go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever. I don't get it. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a singing... Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her sing my favorite song. Every time she sang the choir, my heart would pound to the rhyme of the words. 
but she likes spiders. That's why I don't. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. And he helped me and took me to the nurse. I tried not. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I see her. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other op- hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she, it doesn't hurt anyone. She's, it's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spiders. And I'm going to tell everyone. So you're not going to be friends with someone just because they like spiders. And why do people hate spiders? They're, they, they're good at... They kill insects that carry diseases. They eat bugs that carry diseases. Not bad, right? It's quite longer than... Yeah, it's quite a... It's a quite... Fuck. It's a quite bit longer. It's quite a bit longer than yesterday. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just wondering out. I hope you didn't think of that. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. Not really. I really don't care. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with such with such simple ag- analogies. 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 Whatever. I don't fucking know. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Kind of, never mind. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Aren't you kind of being an ignorant jerk? Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about everyone. Of course, it's about everyone. Fuck. Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to re- I wrote it to be easy to read. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of. If people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. Well, that just makes well, that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone, and it makes them happy. Yeah. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri worried. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about un- an unusual hobby of hers. I really didn't get it, but but she said something similar to me. That people should make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I couldn't doubt, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's not like I wouldn't judge. It's not like I. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Matsky has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it. It sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless it's a good message. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like convenient emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. 
Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow. So look forward to it. Okay. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have some extra planned today. I have something extra planned today. So everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have the plan? Do we really have something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry, but don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more of a, than a few decorations. Sayuri has been working on posters, and I've designed some of the pamphlets we can give out during the events. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually doing for the event. Okay. I had a pause. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. Well, we're going to be performing. Performing? Um, Monica. Yeah. We're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to re recite the event during the event. Fuck. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poem too. Sayori's putting it on the poster. Posters, posters, in case anyone wants to prepare it ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring the posters, holds it up just for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't. You didn't already put those. You didn't already start putting those posters up, didn't you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really have to think this is a bad idea? Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to perform in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot. It's a lot. To, it's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud in a room in a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But. I still think we should be, I, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the if we start the event and each other put on if we start the event and each put on a, a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more the people the more people and the more people perform better we're able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Okay. With finding new horizons. Having fun. That's right. And those reasons that we're all and those reasons are it's those re and it's those reasons that work in the club in this club today. Don't you want to share that with the others to inspire them to find the same feelings that you brought here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if that if, if, and if, if and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting the poem, then I know you can do it. 
Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Okay, fine. I guess I'll have to get it over. Alright! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. I guess I really don't have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of the class. Or in front of each other, my bad. No way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it? How do you expect the people? How do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no! Don't worry. I'll start off with everyone. I'll start off to help everyone feel a more comfortable, a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh huh. Uh huh. Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to specify the poem. Then stands up behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion, apply emotion behind each line she recites. Bringing, bringing, to worse, bringing the worst of life. Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply unnatural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayuri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was hoping that set a good example. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go, Are you ready to go next, Sayuri? Uh, I'll go next. Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Her hand keep her head down. She she walks quickly over the podium. This poem is called. Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called an after image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly Yuri gets the first couple of As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables with a fierce and confident, a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure and she communicates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into worldly fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly she finishes. Everyone is stunned. Yuri steps back into reality glances and glances around her as if she bewildered every, even herself. I, it's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first one to start applauding. I'm the first one to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward. We give you and we give Yuri the recognition of this she deserves. 
it's not like it's not that we didn't want to applaud for her but we were so caught up but we were caught up so off guard that we must have forgotten as we applaud Yuri as we applaud Yuri holds her poem to her chest and rushed back into her seat Yuri that was good thank you for sharing it looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm the next in. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks into the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot hotter than I thought. How did you guys get it so... How'd you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting the others. Try, try to, try not to think, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. It'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem is it the poem isn't as aimless fuck. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's ser serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this paper I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she like when she said she likes my poem. It's like I get reached more. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Matthias liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere is the atmosphere. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poem. It might be that the other poems wouldn't quite work as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. <clears throat> oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> and then, then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before my size. What the fuck? It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well, I might, might as well let Matthias lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Bro, why are you being so damn, why are you being so fucking difficult? Natsuki, it's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection to read, of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I, what I wrote for today. I stand up and sit up in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Oh my god. I, I hate public speaking, man. Because of this shit right here. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's, I think it's less, 
I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. There's something that will, that's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. That leaves just you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she recites the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she is a little un unenthusiastic, her poem has a rhyme, rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. But words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to a poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back into her seat. That wasn't bad, now was it? That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better off, you better not make me do that again. Oh well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be e way easier. I can put effort, I can put whatever face I want to for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's, surpri that's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess that's the case. You won't, be, you won't have much to do. You won't have... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have a... It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time when you'll what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I probably sh I should probably find more poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting into effort all of this. I'm surprised that you, I'm pleasantly, I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Yeah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's it. I think that's about it for today. Uh, I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out, it's been really, it's been working out really nicely so far. So I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning on, we'll finish planning tomorrow. Then we'll have to, then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big deal. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you always. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Eh <laughs> heh Jeez, guys. Jeez, guys, don't make a big deal out of this. It must be a little nice, though. Well, well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Matthias. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. 
I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. You know, so far this game actually... So far, no dark shit. They said this game is more... This game has... They said this game has some graphic shit, but I don't see any. Um, so far, we haven't seen any yet. Hey, Sayori. Hmm? Sorry, I was spacing out. No wonder. Um, I was thinking about something earlier. I was thinking about something earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sorry if I'm with her words. So, let's just say it one day... Let's just say one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, shit. Hold on. I don't know. Would, you, would I walk home with I don't know. You said if she asked? Walking home with Yuri. Why does... Why does that thought... Why does that thought... Why does that thought make me... Why does that thought make my heart come? I mean... Given how hard it is for her to socialize with her... I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Uh huh. You admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something like that. It's never something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you need me. Wait. It's not long before you won't need me anymore. You know. Need you. Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, everyone is different. Nobody is a club. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off, and I'm feeling like I'm left feeling awkward. But that's kind of her fault for trapping me. For trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. So that's that's why there's no option in speculating. Then again, the festival is only for a few Then again, the festival is a few days away. Who knows what who knows what will happen in that time? Okay. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to stop it right here because um, I just need a break. Well, not really a break. I'm gonna stop it right here because I'm gonna call it a night. I'll call it a day. Um, that being said, have, I will enjoy. I will play this again. Um, that being said, have a nice day. In the meantime, I'm out.